What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. We're headed out on the lake today to do another search and recovery dive. However, this dive is a little bit special for me, uh, specifically because the item that we're looking for is one of my dive compasses. So we're gonna head out to the sandbar where I know I lost it. We're gonna do a couple different search patterns and see if we can locate it. At the end of this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can secure your gear so that you don't lose it when you're getting on and off a boat and things like that. But let's get up the lake here and see if we can find it. talk a little bit real quick about how I lost the compass and what I was doing so basically on my equipment here get the bungee cord off for you guys this is typically how I'll store my gear when I'm not using it you can see I've got a couple flashlights and an extra uh, working double ender here well the bolt snap here where my main flashlight is this is the one that I actually keep my compass clipped off whenever i'm stowing gear on a boat or something like that so it stays clipped off right here and then once i get in the water in this particular situation a lot of times what we'll do is actually throw our equipment into the water because it's very shallow here and then we'll jump in and put our gear on in the in the water it's a little bit safer than trying to do a giant stride breaking your leg things like that so we'll actually get in the water put our gear on well when I went to unclip my flashlight to put it on my hand, the compass had just slid right off. Now, what I do know is that I was somewhere, say, within 10 to 15 feet of this buoy system. So that's where we're going to actually start our search. Um, and all we're going to do is a circle search. And since the buoy is actually already anchored to the bottom, then that's what we're going to use as our starting point. So we're just going to do circle searches around the anchor of the buoy and hopefully we'll come across it very soon. So let's get our gear together. Let's uh, put it on, jump in the water and see if we can find it. All right, guys, so I decided to hear at the end when I was editing this to actually commentate through this just to maybe help you guys understand a little bit better about what we are doing underwater, how we are conducting the search, why we chose this particular search pattern. Uh, and I know I said at the beginning that we was going to basically kind of do a circle search. We actually changed that right at the last second, and we decided to do a sweep search. And if I put a diagram up here real quick for you, you'll understand why we chose to do that. Um, in short, a circle search would not really localize the area where we knew my compass was at. Um, so we decided to do a sweep search just so that we could do a more localized search. So imagine for a second if this is the compass here, there would be really no point if this is our boat and this is where the compass is there'd be no point to do a circle search anywhere other than that localized area so if we conducted say a sweep search then we could do it as well uh, as you can see here we we come across several different pairs of sunglasses as well when it was down there uh, just doing a, a quick little uh, glimpse here just to see if these are oakley's or anything expensive these ended up being relatively cheap glasses but um, i'm going to hand these off to the diver real quick and then we'll get our line reset and we're actually going to do a sweep search but like i said we do the sweep search simply because we can localize our search a little bit better than searching grounds where we knew that the compass wasn't going to be but basically with a sweep search what you're going to do is is you're going to have a pivot man or a pivot diver and he's going to just sit there and basically pivot and he's going to be controlling you as the search diver and as you're swimming to the left or to the right uh, he's going to guide you he's going to tell you when to stop when to start he's going to let out the uh, amount of line that needs to be let out and typically speaking how much line do you let out on a search well there's several different factors there depending on what the visibility is depending on the current depending on the search area depending on the um the size of the object all that all those variables are really going to depend on how much line you let out each time basically in short all he's doing is letting out um about five feet of line per sweep here so as he lets that line out uh, 
and he locks it into position, then I'll change positions and swim in the opposite direction, and then he'll stop me, let the same amount of line out, stop me, and then I'll swim back, and that's basically conducting the sweep there. Now, on this particular dive, it actually took about an hour to complete. You guys, thankfully, you're not going to get to see the whole hour-long dive. I'm not sure that would be very interesting to you. So we have edited this down quite a bit, but we chose two specific areas to do the sweep, and that's what we're, we're doing now. Right now, you're seeing the first little part. I'll show you how we reset up as well here just briefly so that you can understand what it is that we're doing um, when we're setting up for it but i'm just sweeping back and forth that's that's pretty much how you do a sweep search you search the area uh he'll stop or the your main guy will stop you and then let out line then you swim back in the opposite direction and so i'm just sweeping back and forth back and forth back and forth now i'm actually swimming back to him here we've just exhausted our search on the first uh, localized area we're going to change positions now um, typically speaking i wouldn't be swimming directly back to him i'd let him be rolling up the line as i did it but you know i wasn't very far away i was only about 15 20 feet away uh, we had some pretty decent vis and we're not very deep so i wasn't really concerned about um, any type of entanglement swimming back the way I did. You will notice here briefly though that the line did get entangled. This is how easy entanglements can occur uh, especially when you're dealing with loose line and that line obviously was taught during the search as I swim back to him you'll see that uh, it, it created quite a bit of an entanglement issue. So we're going to spend a few seconds here getting the line unknotted and then we're going to reset up the search pattern. You'll see me communicate with him uh, briefly about where we're actually going to do this secondary search at. So once we get set up, we discuss where we want to do our next localized search. Like I said, there's so many different variables on how much line do you let out, what type of search pattern you do. Uh, you really need to be comfortable with your dive buddy and comfortable with your abilities when you do these search and recovery dives. With that being said, if it's something you're interested in, Go check out your local SSI facility, find an instructor that can teach search and recovery diving, and take the class. It's a very, very um, good class to take as far as education goes and to build up your skill set. You're going to learn more than a circle search. You're going to learn more than a sweep search. You're going to learn square searches, uh, navigational searches. You're going to learn jack stay searches, uh, deep searches. There's all different types of searches that we do. Now that we've reset here, we are just going to change the area and all he did was just turned his body 90 degrees so we searched out in front now we're going to search over to the left um, but you'll notice that the sweep pattern itself will actually intersect and i'll show you real briefly what i mean it actually intersects part of the other search area that we did as well so that way it is still a, a very methodical search um, and it does make things a little bit more successful for you when you're out here searching but now that we're on our second leg, it's just another repeat. And it looks like I'm going back and forth, left and right. I'm really not, guys. I'm actually going, you know, in a circular fashion. That's just my head turning. The camera's on my head. I'm looking left to right. There you can see I'm checking to make sure the line's taut. And all I'm doing is swimming. He is actually guiding me. Since he's the pivot man, as I swim, it pulls me in that circular fashion. Um... But I'm just looking back and forth. There's another pair of glasses. Like I said, we found a ton of glasses on this particular dive. But um, I'm just going back and forth. I'm turning my head left and right. I'm looking for what I know a compass looks like. And whatever you're looking for, you need to know what it kind of looks like so that you'll know what you um, see when you see it, if you will. But as we come to the end here, you'll notice that I just catch a really quick glimpse of the uh, compass. There it is. I pick it up. I know what it looked like because, once again, it was my compass. Um, if you're in the, here, I'll signal to him that, hey, I've located it. Go ahead and take up the line. And you'll notice this time the line doesn't get entangled like it did at the end of the first search. But uh, when you're doing search and recovery, guys, go out. Ask the person that you're searching for, what is the object, how deep is it, how much does it weigh, um, what does it look like, because whatever that object may be, you may not know anything about it. He may say, well, it's a square, it's a whatever it is. Get as much uh, description of that object as you can so that it makes your search and recoveries more successful in the fact that when you see it underwater, you know what it is and that you won't actually pass it by thinking, well, that wasn't what I was looking for. But yeah, as you can see, a very successful search. 
I was able to locate my compass, which I was very, very pleased with um, because this is relatively an expensive compass that I really didn't want to lose or didn't want to have to replace by going out and buying me a new one. So we're going to end the search here. Once again, I'm just letting him kind of pull me in as he wind up, winds up the uh, reel there or the line. That way I don't have any more entanglements. And like I said, typically speaking, I wouldn't just swim back over to him. I'd let him wind me up. But on that first dive, I wasn't, you know, I was less than 15 feet away. But you can see, even in 15 foot, how quickly an entanglement can occur. But there you can get a good glimpse of how many sunglasses I actually found during these sweeps. Like I said, we searched for over an hour and uh, I've got it edited down to, you know, uh, to about 15 minutes here for you just to make it a little bit more entertaining and a little bit more educational for you. But, uh, but yeah, that's a sweep search. That's how easy it is. Uh, you can do this in a solo diver scenario. However, it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot safer to do it with a buddy. I might make a video in the future about how to do a solo search if you're, uh, say, a solo diver and you do a lot of jobs like we do. Uh, I know, you know, probably two, three days a week I'm out doing search and recoveries in the lake. And a lot of times it is solo search and recovery. So I might make a video in the future on that. But, uh, yeah, very successful search. Found my compass, which I'm very pleased at. And so let's go ahead and end this out. I'll give you a, an outro here just briefly and talk a little bit more about the compass and what we did. All right, guys, so we just got finished up. Very successful dive. I did find my compass. This is the Mares XR compass. I really like it. It's actually kind of expensive, so I'm very happy and pleased that we found it. We've been out here two other times looking for this thing. Um, Thankfully, we were very successful on this dive. Although I do want to talk a little bit more about being successful. Uh, we found some sunglasses. Like I said, we've searched for this compass two other times in the exact same location without any luck. And somehow between last week and this week, all these glasses mysteriously appeared. So, you know, to all the, the late goers out there that's lost your sunglasses in the last week, thank you very much. We found them. Um, but getting back to the compass real quick. I'll be making a series of videos on underwater navigation coming up very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. If you're having trouble understanding how navigation works or how you can have a more successful dive when you're doing underwater navigation, stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you out as well. We'll be talking about the different types of compasses, whether it's a wrist strap, whether it's a bungee strap. We'll be talking about a compass uh, or a console mount compass. We'll also be talking about these little old button compasses that a lot of times you'll see us wear on our watches. And I'll, t I'll show you tips and tricks to make your underwater navigation more successful. We're going to be talking about reciprocals, squares, triangles. I'll even show you how to swim a circle. And i actually give you a little hint. Take one fin off, you'll swim a perfect circle all day long. But guys, I really appreciate you coming on this dive with us. I'm glad that we were successful simply because this was my compass and not somebody else's. But uh, I do appreciate you coming on. If you like this dive, if you like this video, simply smash that like button for me. Definitely share it as well. I got a trip coming up to Florida next weekend. Uh, you'll be, you guys will be coming along with us because I'm going to show you some neat places that we dive when we're down there. But if you got any questions whatsoever, put it down in the comment section below. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Find us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.